celebrate this Eucharist, let us offer our sins completely. Let us offer totally ourselves, our abilities, and all our strengths and sorrows and joys, and ask the Lord our God to receive our offering humbly and help us to enter, to strive to enter through that narrow door to that kingdom of God. Let this be the prayer in our hearts as we offer this Eucharistic celebration. Along with this, let us also offer all the people in our neighborhood, especially all our parishioners, especially those who are suffering from the COVID-19 pandemic. Let us pray, pray for them and ask the Lord, the good healer, to heal each and every one in our community, in this whole world.
your beloved Son in His mercy has given us these sacred mysteries for the renewal and redemption of human race. We pray that you strengthen us who are frail to celebrate these mysteries. Lord of all, forever. Amen. Every week, 
each of you is to put aside and save whatever extra you earn, so that collections need not be taken when I come. And when I arrive, I will send any whom you approve with the letters to take your gift to Jerusalem. If it seems advisable that I should go also, they will accompany me. I will visit you after passing through Macedonia, for I intend to pass through Macedonia. And perhaps I will stay with you or even spend the winter, so that you may send me on my way wherever I go. I do not want to see you. I do not want to see you now, just in passing, for I hope to spend some time with you, if the Lord permits. But I will stay in Ephesus until Pentecost, for a wide door for effective work has opened to me, and there are and there are many adversaries. If Timothy comes, see that he has nothing to fear among you, for he is doing the work of the Lord just as I am. Therefore, let no one despise him. Send him on his way in peace, so that he may come to me, for I am expecting him with the brothers. Now concerning our brother Apollos, I strongly urge you to visit you with the other brothers, but he was not willing at all to come now. He will come when he has the opportunity. Keep alert, stand firm in your faith, be courageous, be strong. Let all that you do be done in love. Praise be to Christ our Lord. Jesus Christ, 
today the Catholic Church is entering into the seventh and the last Sunday of the Apostles. And today we have an interesting passage, a passage on the narrow door. I'm sure most of us have heard it several times about this narrow door. Recently when I was in Gujarat, I happened to receive a WhatsApp message, a pic in fact, especially during the same days, I hope, exactly one year before. And the picture showed a picture of a cross, simple as it is, a picture of a cross, but it was almost like a door. This cross had a kind of opening, and this cross was an opening basically inside a door. And through this cross, a person was creeping into. What a picture did they depict what narrow door was. I really salute that artist. In fact, one of the metaphors of this narrow door is the cross itself. But today I would like to take you through the same Bible passage, the Bible sentences that we just heard right now. We just notice this whole concept of striving through the narrow door comes when Jesus mentions about this a kind of parable or story to his disciples. And in this story, you see some people standing outside the door and knocking. And they say something very important. Lord, open the door. And in reply, the owner of the house, or rather to say Jesus himself, the owner of our hearts, he is basically saying, I do not know where you come from. I do not know who you are. Then why should I open the door? In fact, it is true. Even in our own houses, when in fact now the, the, the kind of security is totally increased, the moment you see someone ringing the bell or knocking at the door, we take so much of precaution to see who this person is. Either at least we have a lock to the door and just peep into who it is and then only open the door if we know the person. The same thing is this owner doing. The owner is asking, who are you? I do not know who you are. And in reply, these people say two important things. Two very important things. One that say, they say is, we ate and drank with you. And the second important thing they say is, and you taught in our streets. Two important things. One about eating, that is dining, and the other about the word being distributed by God, Jesus himself. In fact, in today's world, if we have to use these same passages, I would say, the people knocking at the door would say, Lord, we came for the Holy Mass. We came for the Holy Kurbana. We were there for that dining table that you had prepared for us in the church. And we were there when you spoke those words for us. When the priest spoke instead of you, giving this message of love that you gifted us to the cross. The gift of salvation that you gifted us on the cross. Then Jesus is giving this reply. I still do not know you, you evil doers. Why did Jesus say this? Why do, if, if we go through mass every Sunday, most of them even every day they go for masses in the churches. Some of them are participating online masses every day. All of you are listening to the word of God being proclaimed in this holy Eucharistic celebration. And even apart from this, when the retreat preachers give us messages, we all are listening to it carefully. Still, somewhere Jesus is saying, you are not worthy enough to enter the kingdom of God. Remember, do not mistake my words. I'm not saying these are not conditions to enter the kingdom of God. Rather, apart from these, something else Jesus is asking. And what is that? In fact, in the same gospel, but a different passage, Luke chapter 8, when his own mother and his disciples, basically they are called brothers and sisters, come to visit Jesus. Jesus tells this to the people. Who are my brothers and who are my sisters? They are those who hear the word of God and obey it and practice it. Somewhere, that we miss is this factor. We listen we participate in the Mass, but apart from this Mass, probably the only time we feel we are Christians is only when this celebration of Eucharistic celebration takes place or when we listen to the Word of God. Apart from that, when we live our life, probably we are forgetting that we are Christians. We are forgetting the teachings of Christ. We always tend to do what we wish to do. St. Paul says even in today's Bible passage in the letter, 
Do everything for the love of God. Do everything for the glory of God. My friends, are we doing it for the glory of God or for our own glory? To enter through this narrow door, the most important thing is lessen your weight and less the luggage, more the comfort, easily you enter through this narrow door. The luggage that we are carrying is our own ego, selfishness, self-centered lives. Let us all give it away completely and live the life that Jesus has taught us. And let us see if we can enter through the narrow door. I'm sure the owner of the house will not stop us this time, but will rather open the door of his heart to the sacred heart of Jesus. And then we will be able to live in that kingdom that God has promised us. Let us close our eyes for a moment and pray. Loving Lord Jesus, we thank you for this beautiful day and this beautiful passage. We are sorry for those moments where we could not understand this narrow door in our lives. We often chose the door that was wide open, full of enjoyments and happiness alone. But we forgot that you too chose for us the road which was less traveled by the people. The road of sacrifices, the road of sorrows, the road that took others' lives to consideration than one's own life. Help us also, Lord, to go through this life of cross, of sacrifice, of self-giving, and make us worthy enough to enter the kingdom of God through this narrow door. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us all stand in joy and exultation. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Father of mercies and God of all consolation, we pray to you. Lord, have mercy on us. Our Savior and Guardian and the Provider of all things, we pray to you. Lord, have mercy on us. For peace, unity and stability of the whole world and all the churches, we pray to you. Lord, have mercy on us. For our country, for all other countries and for the faithful everywhere, we pray to you. Lord, have mercy on us. For temperate climate, plentiful harvest, prosperous year, and the well-being of the whole world, we pray to you. Lord, have mercy on us. For the well-being of our Holy Father, Pope Francis, the head of the Universal Church of Christ, the Major Archbishop, Mar George Arlenchiri, the head and father of our Siro Malba Church, Father and Bishop of our Diocese, Mar Sebastian, and for all other bishops and their fellow ministers, we pray to you. Lord, have mercy on us. Let us commend ourselves and one another to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord our God, we commend ourselves to you. Lord Almighty God, we humbly implore you. Fill us with your merciful grace. Pour forth your gifts through our hands. May your blessings and grace obtain forgiveness of debts and remission of sins for the flock you have chosen in your infinite mercy. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Lord of all, forever. Amen. May God, the Lord of all, wash away the stains of our debts and sins in the ocean of his mercy. And may the Lord wipe away the stains of our sins through His compassion.
the just from the beginning and forever and evermore. Amen. Apostles of Christ, only be Let us remember all the rulers who love Christ and are faithful to him and all who have departed from this world in true faith. Bless O Lord, pray for me, brothers and sisters, that this good bond may be fulfilled through my hands. May God, the Lord of all, continue to fulfill his will. May he accept this good bond and be pleased with the sacrifice of all. For yourself, for us and for the whole world. Amen. Lord our God, we thank you for the abundant graces you have showered on us. For though we are sinful and weak, through your infinite mercy, you have made us worthy to be ministers of the sacred mysteries of the body and blood of your anointed one. We implore you to strengthen us to celebrate with deep love and true faith these gifts that you have given us. We offer you praise and honor, worship and thanksgiving, now 
always and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. With you and with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, give peace to one another in the love of Christ. Let us thank the Lord and entreat Him with pure and contrite hearts. Let us stand with due reverence and be attentive to the awe-inspiring mysteries being celebrated here. The priest is imploring that peace may flourish through his intercession. Bowing our heads, let us lift up our thoughts to heaven and pray fervently and devotedly in our hearts. Peace be with us.
We commemorate the passion of your beloved son as he taught us. On the night he was handed over, Jesus took bread in his pure and holy hands, lifted up his eyes to heaven, to you the adorable Father. Blessed it, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, This is my body which is broken for you. For the forgiveness of sins. Take this, all of you, and eat it. Amen. Likewise, taking the cup, he gave thanks, blessed it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for many for the forgiveness of sins. Take this, all of you, and drink from it. Whenever you gather together in my name, do this in memory of me. Lord, as you have commanded us, we, your humble, weak, and distressed servants, are gathered together in your presence. You have showered upon us such great blessings for which we can never thank you enough. To make us share in your divine life, you assumed our human nature, restored us from our fallen state, and brought us from death to life eternal. For giving our deaths, you sanctified us sinners, enlightened our minds, defeated our enemies, and glorified our frail nature by your immense grace. We give you glory and honor, thanksgiving and adoration for all your favors and graces you have granted us now, always, and forever. Amen. Pray in your hearts, peace be with us. For the Supreme Pontiff in Rome, the ruler and head of the Universal Church, Pope of Francis, for the Major Archbishop, my George, the father and head of our church. For the Bishop, Master Boston, the father and head of our diocese. For all bishops, for the entire Holy Catholic Church, for priests, consecrated persons, lay missionaries, rulers, and all those who are in authority, Lord Mighty God, receive this Kurbana. Lord, graciously receive this Kurbana. For the honor and glory of all the prophets, disciples, martyrs, confessors, and all the just and holy fathers who have found favor in your presence. Lord, receive this Kurbana. Lord, graciously receive this Kurbana. For all those who suffer and are in distress, the poor and the oppressed, the sick and the afflicted, for all those who have departed from us in your name, for this your people await your mercy with great hope. For all our intentions, for all those who have asked for our prayers, and for all those who are indebted to pray for. Especially all those who are suffering from the COVID-19 pandemic, the whole world and especially in our neighborhood and in our parish. All those who are celebrating the birthdays and wedding anniversaries during these days. For all those who aspire to priesthood and religious vocation. And for me, your unworthy servant, Lord, receive this Kurbana. Lord, graciously receive this Kurbana. Lord our God, as you taught us, we offer you the body and blood of your anointed one on this pure and holy altar. May we invoke in this memorial celebration the sacred memory of Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, and of the just and holy fathers who found favor in your presence through your infinite mercy. Grant us your peace and tranquility all the days of our lives. Let all the people on earth know that you alone are the true God the Father and that you sent your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. May all the people know that Christ our Lord and God in his life-giving gospel came and taught us the way of purity and sanctity of the prophets and apostles, martyrs and confessors, doctors and bishops, 
priests and deacons and all the children of the Holy Catholic Church who have been signed with the living and life-giving seal of baptism. Lord, we are humble, weak, and distressed servants, having received your example from generation to generation, have come together in your name and stand in your holy presence, rejoicing and glorifying. We commemorate and celebrate these great, awesome, holy, life-giving, and divine mystery, the passion, death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray in silence and reverence. Peace be with us. Lord our God, may your Holy Spirit descend on the Skribana. May he dwell on the Skribana of your servants and bless and sanctify it. May the Skribana grant us remission of our debts, forgiveness of our sins, great hope in the resurrection of the dead, and new life in your heavenly kingdom with all those who have found favor in your presence. Lord our God, we offer you unending praise for your glorious and ineffable plan for our salvation. We offer you thanksgiving with joy and hope in your church, redeemed with the precious blood of your anointed one. We offer glory and honor, thanksgiving and worship to your living, holy and life-giving name, now, always and forever. Amen. Have mercy on me, O God, in your loving kindness. In your great compassion, wipe away my sins. Bless us, O Lord, where your mercy draws near to these glorious, sacred, life-giving and divine mysteries, though truly we are unworthy. O Lord Jesus Christ, may they be glory to your name and worship your majesty forever. For this living and life-giving bread has come down from heaven and gives life to the whole world. Whoever eats this bread will not die, but will receive remission of sins and attain salvation and live forever. Peace be with us. 
Lord our God, make us worthy to be in your presence with the confidence you have mercifully bestowed on us. Enable us to stand in your presence with cheerful face and pure hearts. Calling upon you together we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day the bread we need and forgive us our debts and sins as we have forgiven those who offended us. Do not let us fall into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord God Almighty, fullness of all goodness, our merciful Father, we entreat you for your mercy. Do not lead us to temptation, deliver us from the evil one and his hopes. For yours is the kingdom, the might, the power and the dominion, in heaven and on earth, now, always and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. With you and with your spirit. The holy Kurbana is for the holy people. God the Father and Holy Soli, God the Son and Holy Soli, God the Spirit and Holy Soli. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Let us praise the living God. Let there be eternal praise to Him, the Church. Let His blessings and mercy be on us at all times. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who gives us life, be made perfect in us through His mercy. Always and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the Holy Church invites you to receive the body and blood of the Son of God with faith in the heavenly kingdom. Sing your praise with all of my strength. 
Spirit, and give thanks to Him, the giver of all gifts, for counting us worthy to approach the holy altar and to participate in these glorious, holy, life-giving, and divine mysteries. Lord God, Lord God we praise you for this inevitable gift. Let us pray, peace be with us. Lord our God, it is right and just at every moment and all seasons to offer praise, worship, and thanksgiving to your glorious name. In your great compassion, though we are weak, you made us worthy to release the sweetness of your life-giving and divine words, to glorify your name with the angels, to partake in these holy mysteries you have given us, and to sing constantly hymns of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Most High, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Lord of all, forever. Amen. Bless us, O Lord. Christ, who is the Lord and God, King and Savior and life giver in His mercy, has made us worthy to receive His sanctifying and precious body and blood. May He bless us so that we may please Him through our thoughts, words, and deeds. Lord, in Your immense mercy, may the covenant we have received from You be for the remission of debts and for the forgiveness of sins. Great hope for the resurrection of the dead and new life everlasting in heaven with all those who have found favor in your presence. Lord of all, forever. Amen. Bless us, O Lord. May Christ Jesus sacred mysteries make us holy worthy of his love. present now to people who need your loving touch because of COVID-19. May they feel your power of healing to the care of doctors and nurses. Take away the fear, anxiety and feelings of isolation from people receiving treatment or are under quarantine. Give them a sense of purpose in pursuing health and protecting others from exposure to the disease. Protect their families and friends and bring peace to all who love them. We make this prayer to Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed Virgin Mary. Pray for us. Saint Thomas. Pray for us. Saint Sebastian. Pray for us. Saint Kuriakos Elias Tavara. Pray for us. Wishing you all once again a very pleasant and blessed week ahead. Since we 
Yeah.